Do not buy rental properties right off the bat. Yeah, you heard me right. I know everybody is telling you that you need to buy rental properties and build wealth and grow your passive income, but it needs to happen at the proper time. You see, when I first got started in real estate investing in 2015, I grew up on the Bigger Pockets podcast. And on the podcast, they talk so much about building up your passive income and achieving financial freedom. And most of the guests kind of looked down upon flipping and wholesaling because they were one-time events that weren't gonna build your wealth long-term. But as somebody who was flipping couches trying to make ends meet at the time, I remember listening to these podcasts and saying, why would I wanna go make $200 a month and tie up all my money in this one property. Why wouldn't I just flip that property and go make $20,000? The $20,000 is gonna be what changes my life far more than the $200 a month. And look, I knew that holding a property long-term would actually win out in the long run. I know that it would appreciate and be worth a lot of money, but it wasn't gonna help me at that time. My mindset was if I grow my active income and still live at the same lifestyle I have now, I'm gonna start saving up a ton of money and eventually I'll be able to buy these rental properties. And so I ignored the advice of what everyone was telling me at the time, and I focused solely on just flipping houses. And by focusing on that, I was able to triple and quadruple my active income every single year. And when that happened, I was then able to start buying these rental properties. And the reason I'm bringing this story up to you is because most people are doing it wrong and they have no idea. So if you don't know who I am, my name's Ryan Pineda. I flipped over 500 homes. We own over 550 rental units. And I've got six different businesses that are doing over a million dollars a year. And all of that success has happened since 2015 when I was broke and flipping couches. And with hindsight, now looking back at my trajectory and watching other people, I've realized there's actually a framework that can help you gain wealth very quickly. This is not the Dave Ramsey approach where you're gonna go pinch pennies and cut up your credit cards. It's not the Graham Stephan approach where I'm telling you not to drink Starbucks. And it's not the millionaire next door approach where I'm telling you you gotta be frugal your entire life and people won't even know you're a millionaire. I think all of those paths suck. The reason being because I took a different path and I've seen other people take this path as well. So that being said, if you're trying to get into real estate investing full time as a career, then this is the path. And this path that I'm about to share with you works for any kind of business, but let's just focus it in on real estate investing. So I've developed a three-step framework that I have in business called Make, Manage, Multiply. So step one is make. What exactly are you trying to make, you might be thinking. Well, I want you to figure out how to do one skill that makes you $250,000 a year net. And so as it relates to real estate investing, there are really three ways to get there. You could start flipping houses today. Maybe you go flip 10 homes at 25 grand profit per home. Maybe you wholesale 25 homes at 10 grand per deal. Or maybe you do Airbnb arbitrage and you build up this portfolio of homes that you manage that's doing over 600 grand a year in revenue and it's netting you 250,000. My point is there are lots of ways to make $250,000 a year in real estate investing. And honestly, if you wanted to take it a step further and you're a realtor, you could also make 250 grand as a realtor being an agent. Now there's a big reason I love real estate for step one, because it also prepares you for step three, which we're gonna get into here later in the video. But the point here is that you need to figure out how to make 250 grand doing one of these methods. I see so many people who are trying all these different things. They're trying to go be a realtor and get clients. They're trying to flip a house here or there. They're maybe trying to go get one Airbnb. And every time I see that happening, it's obvious to me why they're not gaining traction and why they're not where they wanna be. Their mind is too focused on all these different skills that they have not mastered. You need to master one skill. If you're able to do that one skill many times over, you're gonna make a lot of money. So pick one path in real estate and roll with it until you get to 250 grand a year. Now that's gonna to lead to step two of the process, which is to manage. Once you've figured out how to go make money on your own, you gotta now figure out how to hire other people to do it for you. For me, I conquered step one through flipping houses. I did it all on my own. I was able to scale that business and make over 250 grand. And then I said, let me start hiring people so I can go take this to the next level and start making more money and also getting some of my time back. And so that's exactly what I did. I hired somebody to do project management. I hired a realtor to go list the properties for me. I started hiring salespeople to get deals for me. And sure enough, my business started to explode revenue wise, but I also was able to start getting some of my time back. I wasn't the one checking on all the properties anymore. I wasn't the one closing every single deal. 
I wasn't the one listing the properties anymore. Once you learn how to take your skill and teach it to others, you're gonna start scaling your business. I had to go train people how to do project management for me like I did. I had to go train my sales team how to close the way I closed. I had to tell my listing agent how I wanted the pictures and the description and how much I wanted to price these homes at. But the only way I'm able to actually manage people in my real estate business is by doing the skill myself and learning it. Too many people try to hire all these different people right off the bat when they don't know what they're doing. The only way to become good at something is by doing it yourself. And that's why we have step one with figuring out how to make money and develop that skill. Because management in step two is a totally new skill set. Learning how to recruit and hire people is a new skill set. Learning how to manage them on a day-to-day -day basis is a new skill set. Learning how to deal with firing people and turnover and figuring out compensation plans. These are all new skill sets that you have to develop in stage two. But once you develop those skills in stage two, it makes things significantly easier because your business starts making more money and in the end, you start getting more of your time back. Now I will say in stage two, your profit margins are definitely going down because now you have more overhead and more people are eaten versus in stage one, you were doing everything by yourself. So you probably had close to 100% profit margin. And so when this happens, I wanna encourage you not to freak out about it because this is why most entrepreneurs and investors never get to stage two. They always revert back to stage one and they say, well, I can make more money doing this on my own. I would rather just focus on myself why I gotta hire all these guys and make less money. They don't see the big picture of it. They don't realize that they're gonna stay in stage one and just have a job. Albeit, even if they're making 250 grand, it might be a high paying job, but the moment they stop working, they stop eating. Whereas if you get to stage two and you figure out this new skill set, yes, your profit margins might be less. You might make $200,000, but guess what? You got significantly more time. You can work on the business instead of in the business. And in turn, you can decide how far you wanna take it and if you can level it up to over a million dollars. And for me, that's when you've conquered stage two, is once you've net over a million dollars managing an actual business. There's a lot of people who get their revenues over a million dollars, and that's a great goal. I'm not diminishing that at all. But I don't feel like you've conquered stage two yet unless you've made a million dollars in this one skill this one business through hiring people, not doing everything by yourself. And so for me, this is exactly what happened in my journey. I started off on my own flipping houses. I then started hiring people. We made over a million dollars. And it was at that point that I went to stage three, which is multiply. Now multiply is where things start to get really fun because now you've obviously made a good chunk of change. You've made over a million dollars. Now to net over a million dollars is a very difficult thing to do. Most people never do that in a year. So I'm not saying you've got to do it in a single year to pass stage two, but maybe over the next three years, you make over a million dollars net and then you get to go to stage three. And I should also add, while you're in stages one and two, you cannot be spending everything you make. You gotta keep your living expenses very low because you're gonna need all this money in stage three that we're talking about. So don't go living like a boss because you're now starting to build a real business. Still live like you're broke while you're in these first two stages. Now, how does multiplication happen in stage three? Well, you can start investing your money in multiple different things. Number one, you can actually start to buy rental properties now. This was the first time I started buying rental properties. I started buying in Big Bear, I started buying in other markets, I started buying some in Vegas. It's actually the first year that I bought my 10 unit apartment building that I did a YouTube video on. And by the way, you should definitely watch that video after this because I got it seller finance for $16,000 down. The total purchase price was 300,000 and I ended up selling it three years later for 1.2 million. But anyways, that's what happens with multiplication. You start investing in assets and you're now able to multiply your money, really not doing much. That apartment, I didn't really have to do much. It just grew over time because that's what happens with assets. But beyond investing in real estate, I also think that you can reinvest into your business. Yeah, you've made over a million dollars, but let's go and try and make a million dollars a year. Let's go try and make it an eight figure business potentially. If you're gonna do that, you basically gotta dump way more money into the business. You gotta hire more people, you gotta spend more on marketing, you gotta get a bigger office probably. And so you're taking all this money you made and you're trying to multiply it by reinvesting into your real estate investing business. And this is why I say I love real estate for this three step process because it's something that can help you get through steps one and two and then it prepares you for step three just as it is. It's not like you gotta really change anything. You already got this system and business built out. 
you just got to choose to start keeping some of the properties. Whereas other industries like say couch flipping may not even be able to get out of step one, but let's say you do get out of step one, you now got a very difficult step two. It's hard to go make a million dollars flipping couches, but you definitely don't have anything for step three because now you gotta figure out how am I gonna go invest my money in other things. And what I always tell those kinds of people if they're not in the real estate space is like, look, getting into real estate on your own, by yourself, is probably a tough thing, especially when you've already built a successful business. You don't really have time to be worrying about finding a good deal. I would love for you to invest in my fund. We have one called Panetta Capital where we buy commercial real estate all over the country. But even if you don't invest in mine, it's better to invest with somebody else that you trust who's in that space full time because they're gonna find you a better deal than you would have otherwise on your own. Plus, your time is better spent working on your business and helping it grow in this multiplication stage at scale. But to take this all the way back to the beginning, the big problem is so many of you are being fed the lie about trying to build passive income so early. You should not focus on any passive income when you're starting out. You're broke. You need to focus on making active income. You need to focus on building out your skills. You need to focus on building a business that can make money. And if you do that right, you're then going to be able to take all that money you're making and get the passive income stuff later on. If you just think in a five-year time horizon, would you rather stay on the path you're on and buy one property every other year and own three properties by the end of year five? Or would you try and build your business the next three years, not own any rental properties in those first three years, and then in years four and five, go buy 20 units because you've built up a really big business and now you own 20. And oh, by the way, the next 20 years of your life, you're gonna keep on doing this because you built up a skill that's gonna make you a lot of money the rest of your life and you built up a business that can last. I don't know about you, but I'll take option two and that's exactly what I've done. So if you wanna build a business the way I'm talking about with make, man, and multiply, go to wealthyinvestor.com. You can get a free call with my team and we'll teach you exactly how to do it. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. I think you're gonna like this next one, so make sure you click it about my apartment I bought for $16,000.